Hello and welcome to the first episode of Will Run 4. I'm your host, Tom. We're a podcast for running, beer, and anything else we feel like talking about. I'd like to introduce my co-hosts, Aaron. Hi. Michael. Hello. And Diana. Hello. So how's everybody doing this week? Uh, pretty good. We're starting a podcast. <laughs> yeah. First episode. Mm-hmm. So let's let's think about that. Let's talk about our first episode. What 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 do we want to achieve from this? What are our goals here? Aaron, what do you think? I don't know. I just like talking to you guys about running and having fun. So that's about what I want to achieve. I want to talk about what I love doing and okay. share it with the the world. That's fair, <laughs> Diana. Mm. Yeah, I I think I agree. I think I just I want to talk to my friends. I want to laugh a lot. Um, and I listen to a lot of other running podcasts and I just want a place where I hear people that, that sound like me and, and kind of have a similar running journey that I do. Um, that's kind of, you know, more of the, the average runner, the, the casual runner, even though we do have goals and things like that. Uh, but not someone who is constantly, you know, running for these huge events, um, but people that are just kind of running for fun and, you know, want to do what they want to do. Diana's answer was better than mine. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with uh, Diana. <laughs> yeah, well, well, when we started talking about this, we, um, we know that there are a lot of running podcasts out there. And um, that's when we get to our main topic today. That's partially how some of us met each other. Yeah, we did want something just for everyone, for runners of every um, ability level, really focusing on the fun about it, the running community, what motivates us. And we're really, really, our goal is to be entertaining. So with that in mind, let's start off with what are we running for this week? Aaron, what are you running for this week? I ran this weekend. Uh, my goal was to do, uh, to build some miles back. I had a run injury a few months ago that I'm kind of coming back from. Um, and I'm trying to get back into some high mileage stuff. So my goal was to do back to back to back to back, uh, 10 milers, uh, and get a 40 mile weekend in. <laughs> that <Lord>. sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get back into the, the running background, I guess, um, about why I would do such awful things. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to get out there. So this week was kind of a goal week for me to sit, kind of test myself and see where I'm at. Um, get some longer runs in that were back to back uh, without having to do like a 20 miler um, because I think those beat me up more. Um, so I wanted to just, I wanted to see where I was at and see where my body was coming back from this injury. And so I actually ran for me and that goal this week. So at the, so at the end of that, you probably have really tired legs. Like, how are you feeling? You know, you said you're coming back from an injury. You were running back to backs, which I think is a lot of times harder than just running it all in one day. How are you feeling? <laughs> um, today was really difficult. Yesterday, uh, we did elevation. So uh, we did mostly more hike. Uh, we did like 1700 feet of elevation. And the terrain was really terrible and rocky. So we ended up doing mostly hike. But it was still a lot of time on your feet. I mean, it took us almost three and a half hours. So lots of time on my feet. Oh, wow. Today, my legs were just fatigued. Uh, but I mean, that's kind of what I wanted because uh, and to see how if I could run through that, because uh, when you get to some of the higher distances, that's that's what you got to mentally push through is that fatigue and try and keep yourself moving. It sucks. I won't lie. It, it yeah. was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's awesome, uh, Michael. Proud what, of you, <laughs> Michael. What are you running for this week? Well, since Aaron stole what I was running for, because I ran the same miles and hiked the same miles, <laughs> and am not coming back from an injury, but got injured during the runs for those miles, I ran for some delicious empanadas that I had this afternoon, and for a beer that I'm going to have after we get done recording. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to bed because I got work tomorrow. Never mind. I'm not having a beer tonight. Tomorrow, I'll be having a beer for those runs that I'm not going to do tomorrow because I did them all this weekend. Very nice. What about you, Diana? Yeah, so this weekend, I actually got new running shoes. Well, actually, they're, they're not really running shoes. So I have this fixation with Brooks and their holiday shoes. 
So they put out like St. Patrick's Day shoes and Christmas shoes, and I make sure I get those. And they came out with kind of Fourth of July Memorial Day shoes. So their their Star Spangled Banner, you know, their shoes Captain America would be very proud of. So I wanted to run and and show those off today. So that's really what got me out there to run. Um, I don't know. I've been on the struggle bus recently, so it's been really hard for me to get motivated. So even me getting out and doing, you know, two and a half, three miles today, um, felt like I accomplished something. So not, you know, 40 miles over four days, but you know, my three miles and my new shoes, I was, I was running for that today. (laughs) That's it. It's all that matters. Awesome. So for me, uh, one of my good friends challenged me at the beginning of May to run at least a mile every day in the month of May. And I've been able to keep up with that. Um, I did a 5k today. I did a 5k on Friday. Um, and it's just, it's something that I don't even think about. I built into my day. It's, it's weird. This kind of pandemic that we're in where everyone's working from home. I'll sometimes go out at lunchtime and get a quick mile in, you know, it's not something I have to plan for and I have to do in the, in the evening or I have to do in the morning. Like it's kind of gives me a little bit more autonomy to run when I want to run, but um, I've been able to maintain it. And, you know, this is, this is the 25th um, of May where we're recording. So I'm going to keep this up and see if I'm going to continue this through June. I think I will Mm -hmm. um, because I felt really good. That's That's going to be my next Um, question was if you thought you were going to go beyond the, uh, the May mark and make it a June streak as well. I think I will. I think I will. That's yeah, awesome. And today you actually went out and you were like, I don't know, it's kind of hot. I'm not feeling it. And you were going to run a mile. And then what did you, you ended up doing more than that, but I forget how much you did. Yeah, I did. I did a 5k, but you're right. Like I went out at, I think 10 AM and the humidity was 80%. So I wanted to get a good sweat in, but I was kind of feeling it. The music was good. I had this this REM mix. I, I recently stumbled on REM again and I was a big fan in I guess college. So it's just a random mix of their music and I don't know, I was feeling myself. So I just I just decided <laughs> to keep going. You know? That might um, be yeah, that's awesome. an interesting topic down the road. Yeah. Running with music because we don't run with oh. music ever. I used to though. So yeah. The, even I, feel the like transition. I have to have music when I run. But it was weird. I was doing Pio and he's like, I'm going to go do my mile. And I was expecting him to like walk back through the door at any moment. <laughs> and he was gone for like my my whole class, which was probably good because I was I was struggling. So Pio was like Pilates combined with yoga. So you do kind of yoga at like a it's, fast speed. And I hate yoga. <laughs> um, I hate it. And I'm, I'm able to do this. But it was kind of hard because it was over Zoom. Um, and I couldn't really see what the woman was doing. So I would just like make up some stuff and I wasn't sure if like what I was doing was exactly right. I was like, it looks kind of like she's doing this and she's kind of far away from the screen so you couldn't really hear you hear like every third word. So I'd be like, it looks like everyone's bending over now. So I'll do that. Um, so, uh, I actually I love yoga, too. but hate Pilates. So I've done Pio as well, but I hate it for the opposite reason. Cause I hate the Pilates part of it (laughs) well I think it's because I'm not flexible at all like a lot of like the yoga stuff I just can't do and if if I'm moving really fast while doing it it like doesn't show as much that I can't actually touch my toes Mm -hmm. see that's the part I don't like about it I don't I can I can like get through the yoga part of it and I like the good stretch that you get through yoga but I hate the like fast movements and like your transitioning so quickly from one thing to the next thing and I can never figure out what I'm supposed to be doing when I'm watching the videos yeah and she's like blasting music too so it's like yeah instead of like being relaxing yeah. like they're blasting like born this way by Lady Gaga huh. so you're like fist bumping <laughs> like, it's so weird so so our main topic of the week because I'm the king of segues and I'm just going to jump right into it our main topic is we wanted to start this this podcast off right and just say really how we all met each other. It's kind of I mean it's it's an interesting story. It's it's not that interesting, but I I, I teed it up in the beginning that you know we've taken a lot of inspiration from other podcasts that we're fans of, um, other running podcasts that we're fans of. So I'll just go with how I met this group and then we can kind of go around the horn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like um, if people are going to be listening to this, they might as well know who we are. 
um, so that they know, sure. you know, do they like us and do they want to keep listening? So right. this is just so you guys can get to know us a little bit. So, like I said, um, my name's Tom, um, and the lovely lady that was just talking is Diana. She is my wife. I met Diana about five years ago. Before I met her, I had never even thought of running as, as a possibility for me. It just didn't come up. Um, but, you know, when you get together with someone for the first time, you know, you learn their likes and dislikes. And, and when I met her, um, she was, I think she'd committed to doing at least a 5K every month for that year. And she was really getting into this. So I'm like, maybe I could do that. So I, I started running, started run walking and, and running. And just through that, and, you know, when you start running, that, that initial confidence build is pretty quick, right? Because you do a mile, then you do a 5K, then you do a 10K, then you do whatever. And you just, you just, you're pushing yourself and you're like, well, if I can do this, then let me try this you know, in the, in the early stages of our relationship, I signed up for a race, you know, where met other people in, in like her running community. And then through that started listening to a, uh, a podcast and, and listened to that for, you know, a good year and a half or so. And met a lot of people through that podcast, through Facebook and through meetups and going to different races. So, I mean, that's how I met my wife. And, and then, that's how I started to meet all these people in this running community, which is a very tight knit community. And it's, it's very, um, it's very weird that a lot of these people cross paths, um, in, in different capa- like capacities, like they'll be in one group and then they'll bring, you know, a, a new person in and then that person will introduce them to other people. And it's just, it's really cool how this, how tight knit this community is. So that's how I started hearing Aaron's name through Facebook and commenting on different things. Um, and then we met, we really formally met at a, uh, at the bird in hand half marathon weekend. I was doing the 5k, but they were all doing the, uh, the half really from there. We just became, you know, Facebook friends. We would go on some run weekends where we'd see each other at different race races. And, you know, it, it just, it just kind of grew from there. We started to get to know each other. I remember when we first met Aaron, the running joke was that I didn't like Aaron and I put her name in my phone. Cause I didn't know her last name. I put her name in my phone as Aaron, who I hate uh, just to be funny, just to be funny. But then as we became friends, I changed it to Aaron who I do not hate, but yeah, I mean, that really brings us to now because we've just been, you know, Facebook friends that turn into actual friends. I mean, that's, that's kind of cool how that all evolves. So that's how I met all of you. And then I, I, I met Michael through Aaron. Mm-hmm. Um, at uh, in Virginia Beach when we were running Shamrock. Oh yeah, Shamrock. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I that's how I met everybody. I hope I didn't steal too much thunder, but that's mm-hmm. how I met. <laughs> I was going to mention the part where you put me in your phone as uh, Aaron, who I well, how I'm in there as Aaron, who I do not hate at this point. But um, yeah, I mean, my first um, recollection of really meeting you guys was Bird in Hand. I mean, like you said through the podcast group, you know, I'd seen your names and everything and I knew you guys were going to be at the meetup. But my first real memory of you guys is Bird in Hand. And you guys had put it out there on the group page, uh, the meetup page that you guys were going to these breweries. And like, nobody like took you up on it. And I was like, (laughs) but I want to go. But I didn't want to seem like the weirdo who is like, third wheeling it with you guys so you guys were like does anyone want to go and I was like I probably do but I'm not gonna say I do because I feel really awkward (laughs) well it was so funny because we were like I guess no one likes us it was funny because we um we're local to Baltimore so a lot of the races we run um are in Baltimore and in Burden Hands is in Pennsylvania. So we like took a half day off of work. So we were able to drive up there and get up there early afternoon. And we just started shooting messaging out messages out. Hey, we're at this brewery. We're at that brewery. And we're like, I guess, I guess no one's going to come and like <laughs> hang out. Um, but that was my first meetup too. So I didn't know anybody. So either. So it was like really awkward because I was staying at someone's house that I hadn't met before. And then I didn't like know if I should leave that group because I was trying to get to know them. And then like, I just, it was, I had carpooled with some of them to like certain things. So I just like, didn't know. 
I was trying to figure out where I was and what my place was in the whole group. And then like, I did also like when no one was taking you up on it, I didn't want to seem like a third wheel or like the weirdo who was like, Hey, I'm going to go <laughs> hang out with this couple like by myself. So <laughs> I don't know. Well, um, that's fine. Because I mean, if we have a third wheel, that means we don't have to talk to each other. And I mean, we <laughs> see each other a lot. Not that we don't love each other. <laughs> and I would say, you know, I, I love Tom a little more every single day. But it's it's nice to have someone else there to talk to rather than us yeah. just star- staring at each other and making the same jokes over and over again. Yeah. Well, so from there, I, I think we saw each other a pretty decent amount at like different races and stuff. Um, I think we interacted more on Facebook at that point. But um, where I really got to know Diana was uh, Marathon Weekend when she did her first Dopey. And, yeah, down at Disney. <laughs> yep. And our friend Brittany and I were running together and we came upon Diana during the marathon. And it's the end of her Dopey. So she had done the 5K, the 10K, the half marathon, and she was on to the marathon. And we came upon her and I thought she was going to like burst into tears when she saw us and we were like diana there's beer like less than a mile away let's go yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was definitely hitting the wall i think you guys found me at like mile like 22 or yeah. 23 yep. and it was just i was having such a rough day and i kept wanting to be around people and then not wanting to be around people so i'd find people and keep them around for like two or three miles and then i'd you know no go leave me to die. I just want to be alone, like, and send them away. And at that point, like I had sent people away and I really needed people again. Yeah. And I think I was literally picking up my phone to call Tom to like, just sob into like the phone at someone because I was having such a bad time. And you guys found me and sort of, you know, screaming and making me laugh and just basically said, you know, if you can just make it around this corner, there's beer there yep. and you can get a beer. Yep. And so we bought Bought you a beer and then we proceeded to get you drunk yep. <laughs> to finish out your dopey and well i mean we've been out there for about six hours yes. at that point it was so hot you're dehydrated yeah you're hot yes so <laughs> you don't have anything in your system two beers in we were all drunk <laughs> and this c- brings us back to the story about why i think tom does not like me <laughs> 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 was because i got Diana drunk for the end of her very first marathon (laughs) and she went across the finish line and I think Tom was expecting a magical moment and instead I delivered a very drunk Diana to him. (laughs) So, so yeah, I like to romanticize things and when Diana was training for this and Dopey, it's a, it's a, it's a huge feat Um, through, through the running community. I've met a lot of people who have completed this challenge but it's 48.6 miles over four days Um, getting up each day at 3 a.m. at the latest Mm -hmm. 3.30 at the latest. Um, So it it is a physically it's a big feat. Mentally it's a big feat. And Diana really, when she was training for this, she was training with some of our other friends here locally and and other people. And she put everything into training. Like, you know, it it would, it wouldn't even be a question whether or not she trained that uh, on a given day. Like she was really dedicated. And then so so here comes her marathon. And I'm like, again, it's whimsical to me, right? It's 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 romanticized. I, I built this up in my head. Like she's gonna come across the finish line and release doves <laughs> into the air or something. <laughs> um and 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 so I'm I'm watching the finish line, I'm like right next to the finish line, and and the announcer says, I see a sea of green or something. Here comes team shenanigans. Um, because that was the, that, that's the name of the running group that everybody was running with, um, at, at that time, they're just kind of partying across. It's kind of <laughs> like that, that, that fraternity that always almost gets kicked off campus and like those, <laughs> those movies, like it was that group, like they were coming across the finish line with margaritas and beers in hand. And I'm like, okay, all right. So let me not judge, um, but <laughs> I was expecting, you know, some, some, something, I don't know. Different. I don't know what I was expecting, <laughs> not but that. it wasn't, it wasn't this, this drunken mess of cr- crowded, uh, crowd of people coming across. I was still very, very proud. Um, <laughs> well, and, and I think, um, I saw you sitting in the stands right before I crossed the finish line or maybe it was right after 
And you said, you know, congratulations, I'm so proud of you, proud of you. And I screamed, go get us more beer, is I think what I said. I think that was the first thing I said to you. <laughs> you were so annoyed and you were so helpful. And you went and you got, you know, three beers for you Aaron. Did. You did. You got me a beer. Hi. And then I never came and claimed it, which is why yeah. I think that you didn't yeah. like me. I, I, bought, I bought like four beers and I was going to meet you guys. That's like $80 like, at beer. Disney. It's very expensive. <laughs> and then I'm like, where's Aaron and, and Brittany? And then you guys just got on the bus and left. And I no, had like four, didn't. Beers, which I, I didn't mind. I was fine. We have extra beer now. But I was like, I didn't get on go? the bus that time because I was definitely very drunk and um, I was driven back because I, w- I had missed the buses and I was very mm. upset that I had missed the buses because I couldn't figure out how I was getting back despite the fact that someone kept telling me that they were driving me back um, because I was very drunk and could not comprehend this whole thing that was happening. Anyway, so that's my first really big memory of Diana and you were, I remember Bird in Hand really well, but like my first real experience with Diana was that. And then that is why I thought that you hated me for ever because I had ruined your like <laughs> romantic view of what Diana was going to be like by getting her drunk for her first marathon. In the, I mean, if you've ever met me, that's what he really should have expected. He should have expected me to burst through the finish line, not sober. Like if you if you have any experience with me, you should you should have known better, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> So then I met Michael because um, through the same group, um, I wait. Had, didn't you already tell your story? Well, I didn't tell you how I met you. That's my story. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> Michael's story. My bad. Wow. Wow. You're double dipping. Mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was not innuendo. Don't. Mm. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I also found the team shining its podcast when i was looking to run my first marathon which was disney 2017 so i started listening to the show and weirdly like i think over time uh i don't know it was probably like a strava group or something that i think nobody uses but anyway i th- think i was in that and then i noticed that i think we were running like the same segments or routes or something yeah like because i uh we both live in south jersey and at the time we both lived in south jersey and I worked down by the shore and you lived down by the shore. So we used to run down the shore. We never ran across each other, but regardless, we ran the same route. So it was like, oh, I ran that route. I like running that route, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I think uh, maybe a year later you were like, uh, I want to learn how to run on the trails because I run with a local group called the Pineland Striders in South Jersey and it's mostly trail running. So I was like, all right, well, come up. Uh, on a Sunday, we, we get up stupid early and go run some trail in the woods. And then I was like, hey, how you doing? And then I ran away. It's true. Um, <laughs> you totally ran away from me. I was like, hey, I'm trying to find a group of people to run with because I'm trying not to get axe murdered in the woods. Do you uh, think you could run with me since like, I figure you're not an axe murderer being in all of these groups and having some hmm. mutual friends? It would be a good cover, though. It would be it a would good be. cover. But this is what I thought. And so then I meet him and he literally runs away from me. And you're like to go hide behind a tree and murder me later. <laughs> Probably. Look, there was like 10 people or <laughs> no, there was like 12 people yeah, at that run. D- yeah. So you stayed with Robert who gets lost constantly, part of the running group. Um, That's why I don't run in the woods. I would definitely get lost. Oh, yeah. Well, now we're ridiculous. We don't. We just go everywhere. But anyway, so yeah, so you ran out of time and then stupidly for some reason you were like do you want to run in the woods again (laughs) after you ran away from me (laughs) i was training for my first 50k i had signed up for a 50k with some friends and so i needed trail running because that's where it was Mm -hmm. and so i didn't know anyone else really and even though i had met a couple people at the trail run like you were the one who like was the mutual friend from all the different groups true true so i was like hey do you want to run again Mm mm-hmm which I don't know why, but that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, so then we ra- we did uh, it's, so there's this thing called the Batona Trail in South Jersey that goes through the entire Pinelands, basically. Um, and the Pineland Striders running group, uh, somebody puts together every year where they do the whole trail in segments. 
So like you'll do part one. So we met up for leg one, I think it was. Yeah. And, and then you wanted to do some extra miles to whatever, get to whatever amount it was at that time, 20 or something like that, because mm-hmm. you were getting ready. So then we did that. We did most of it with the group. And then we did like the last five, just us. And then she fell. And she's instead of helping trailer. me. I was like, ah. He I just was stood like, there with my hands up. He stood there with his hands up, literally. <laughs> I was like, like, I don't know, I don't know what to do with my hands. What are you? Why smart. are you on the ground? What is happening? It's weird. <laughs> Pretty much what happened. So then, for some reason, she called me to run again. <laughs> He's making it sound like I'm a stalker, by the way. <laughs> and I, I don't know it. why. Well, and it's like. Yeah, that's the exact reason why I just can't do trail running because I feel like and we're going to do like a whole episode <laughs> on kind of trail running, road, road running, all that good stuff. But when I run, I basically, you know, because I don't want to die, I put one earphone in and then I just go and I I just run on the road and I feel really safe and I kind of go on autopilot and I don't really mm-hmm. have to think of anything. When you're running in the trail, you have to be super alert. So I can't like have my body and my brain be tired at the same time. Like only one can work at the same time. That's that's what I've decided. Well, that's why I had um, decided that I needed somebody to run with because yeah. I I don't know how to navigate through. Like I was gonna have to like watch the trail markings and watch yeah. the trails and like all. Versus if I had found somebody to help me get through that, then at least I could just follow that person that through was the me. woods. Yeah. Um, and then hope that they didn't axe murder me. Yeah, we did a. There you go. Then we did like a twenty miler alone, and you did your fifty k and all that stuff. And then uh, what was it? Oh, you convinced me to go to Disney for the marathon again because I, I had done the first one at Disney, and I've kind of, and I had uh, was trying to do at that time was thinking of doing a fifty for fifty, you know, fifty states, fifty marathons, whatever. So I wasn't going to repeat it, obviously. Um, but then she cursed at me a lot. It's true. And was like, like she do. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of F-bombs, stuff like that. Things I don't say. And. <laughs> He's making me sound so terrible right now. And I don't know why. And she's like, you should run the Disney marathon. And I was like, well, I'm running a double marathon the next weekend. She's like, so what? Just run it anyway. I was like, like it's a training right, run. I'll run it anyway. So that was a mistake. Um, because. Man. You don't want to run with them when they're drunk. <laughs> Diana does. I I've mean, done, I do, it. but I want to be part of the drinking while running. Man. Not observing the drinking while I was running. A it's target. only fun if you're doing it. I was a target of the drinking while running. Yeah, we were running with friends, and so the friends were getting drunk. I may have also been getting drunk. And may so have. he ran away <laughs> from us. I did. I mean, that's why we go to Disney, though. Like, you run, you have goal races, and then you have Disney races, which are just meant for fun and character stops and uh, drinking around the world at Marathon. <laughs> well, look, I, to be fair, I ran away and still finished over seven hours. So, like, I didn't run away in the beginning. I hung in there for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and then well, I, and I just think there, there are some races that you run for fun, yeah. and then there are some races you run for, like, a goal or a time or... Or just you're going to you're going to take it seriously and you've got to get in the right like frame yeah. of mind. But I've gotten to the point where it used to be like one out of every five races I'd run for fun. And now it's like one out of every five races I run to be serious. Mm-hmm. Like and I feel yeah. like I put in the hard work and the race is my my celebration. So I'm just going to enjoy it. So yeah, unless I'm think- going up for like a time goal. I'm just like enjoying the races I sign up for. Yeah, I think that took me a while to figure out like, and we'll talk about that, I guess, when we do more personal introductions. But um, I think that took me a long time to figure out was that I was in a group uh, when I first started running that was more serious. And so everything was all about time goals. And like everyone was always running for like speed and Mm -hmm. like I could never catch up to anybody. And it just was like very daunting. And it felt like Mm -hmm. very uh, like... I was never good enough and it took me a while to figure out what fun running was and that you can stop and pet the dogs Mm -hmm. along the way and you can stop and have a drink along the way. Well, that was the, that marathon was the first time I ran for fun because I always ran alone. I did everything alone, you know, so I just ran my races for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so that was my first, you know, marathon I ran for 
you know, fun, which but was weird. But then you weird. had so much fun that you came to Shamrock and met yeah. Diana and, and Tom. Yeah, and that's, yeah, actually that marathon is what led me to Shamrock to run my second half marathon ever and only my second ever, which we'll discuss at some point. But <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that was how I met you guys at, at Shamrock when everybody yelled at me again. Where we also got very <laughs> drunk. <laughs> Yeah. There seems like, to be a theme. <laughs> well, and I feel like Shamrock with a name. Oh, so man. Shamrock is a what huge a great... event down in Virginia Beach. It's it's kind of a two day event. There's an eight K, and then on Sunday there's either a half marathon or a marathon uh, that you can sign up for. But everyone in the community comes out. People have like beer on the side of the road for mm-hmm. you. Just. Just everyone comes out and and it's really a fun run. And I, I've done it a few times. The first time I did it, I did it for time. I'd never been down there before. I wanted to do it. I was pouring down raining, did it for time. And then the last two or three times I've done it, we've done it for fun run. And and that's when we pull poor Michael into, <laughs> into whatever we do when we run. Yes. This is just nonsense. Yeah. I ran for time. But still had a lot of fun. Yeah. So he did a, he had a PR goal. He ran it really fast. And then the rest of us were running so slow that he ran the half marathon, went back, got showered, got beer, and met us at like mile when we were only at like mile 11 still. (laughs) (laughs) And then I ran to the finish to take your pictures. Yeah. And we yelled at him, (laughs) not only because we didn't think he'd, meet us soon enough like we wanted him at like mile nine so not only did we have that expectation that he was going to run that half marathon go home shower get us beer but but run extra miles to get us the beer sooner um wow. we yeah, run like while we the beer yeah we like <laughs> so and we just started screaming for him yeah. um you know two or three miles before we were even saw him which is quite embarrassing because i'm there with all these people and we had a pretty good sized group we had at least six or seven of us right yeah, yeah. it was a good size yeah and it's just so it's 13.1 miles of screaming at the top of their lungs try that for seven hours <laughs> no i won't but um it's it's a lot of fun it was a lot of fun and then you were kind of like a you were like an angel descending from heaven <laughs> when we finally saw you and you just showed up with a six pack of beer at like, like you said, Aaron, like the 11th mile when we're, I think we just gave up and walked out the final 5k. Well, because I think that we thought he was going to be a little earlier. So we were well, like, I couldn't okay, get we, far enough up the road is what the issue was. Yeah. But yeah. we had told another friend that we were running with that you were going to be at a certain mile. And so she was like, okay, we just need to get to that mileage and then I can walk and I can get my beer. And so when you weren't there, there was some disappointment. <laughs> in that moment um but (laughs) yes um but just on a different note shamrock in general if you ever get a chance to do it and we'll do race reports at some point i assume uh destination races um shamrock is one of uh my favorite i've done it myself a few times as well um they give you four beer tickets and really those four beer tickets sometimes don't mean a whole lot because when they have beer left over on sunday they just start giving them out not true well, unless your name is Michael David and they don't like you. And then Tom and Diana both go up there for their fifth beers without a beer ticket. And they're like, sure, here you go. And then Michael David tries to go do that. And they are like, nope. It's because we look friendly. And we just assume they're going to say yes. So you just go in with that intention. But the whole thing's sponsored by Yingling. So mm-hmm. it's just, you know, it's just a great time. It really is. It was a blast. Yeah. yeah. And I don't um, even like having fun. And I had fun. <laughs> that's true <laughs> and that's why they gave them beer and not you beer because they look like they're ready for fun you look like you're never ready for fun mm. you look like you're drinking to escape <laughs> <laughs> we look like we're drinking to enjoy <laughs> maybe that's what it was <laughs> alright so any any other notes about how we all came together no, no, I, don't, I mean, I that's don't really so. how we all I think met. that's pretty much the genesis of it. Yeah, yeah. And then along the way, we've just, you know, started group chatting and like kind of, um, you know, talking about things outside of running and just be become better friends. And so, yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the reasons why we, we decided to do this podcast as a piggy- piggyback what of what we were talking about earlier is we all we're such different runners, like just even like 
between the four of us were so different. So I think it brings a lot of good perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, a lot of good topics because there's stuff I do that I'm sure, you know, Michael thinks is crazy. And then I think about everything you guys do as far as racing goes, I think is just beyond me. Um, so I'm hoping through this, like we inspire each other a little bit. We challenge each other a little bit. Um, we laugh at each and other then we a just, whole lot. You know, make fun of each other a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. Yes. <laughs> I right, think so that's, that's the plan. That's a that's a good transition into a segment we would like to call Would You Rather. Oh, so Michael's yes. going to take us through a a game called Would You Rather. All right. So this uh, I would like to give credit. This is inspired. I listened to a show called Rice Turkey Sanchez, which is a Sixers podcast, but is generally never about the Sixers. And they have a thing at the end called the Jigsaw they do sometimes, which is two terrible choices inspired by the movie Saul, of course, you know. So this is our version of that, which is, and I mean, everybody does would you rather. So I mean, it's a pretty common thing. So I, this is a pretty tame one I came up with uh, for this week. So, all right. Your first choice, every race you run for the rest of your life, you are on a solid, sustainable PR pace, but in the last mile you trip and fall without getting injured and it causes you to miss the PR. You are also unaware of this and can in no way prepare for what happens each time. Or, for the next three years, every single time you line up for a race, you must use the porta potty before the race. And it it is always down to the last four single sheets of toilet paper. Again, you are completely unaware, and you cannot prevent this from happening, and you are going number two in the second one. So... (laughs) For the next three years? Yes. The second one's only for three years. The other one's for the rest of your for life. the rest of my life, I would never be able to attain a PR because... Because you, you trip and fall. I trip and fall. But you don't get hurt, but... but and that, you never know what's going to happen every race. You think every race you're about to get that PR and then you trip and fall. Or you have to start every race for three years going into a porta pot with only three sheets of... Or four sheets of toilet paper left. Four single sheets. <laughs> That's easy. Or it could be double ply. That's easy. I would hands down go with the porta pots because if it's before race, you'd think that you're not sweaty and gross yet. If it's that you have to stop in the middle of a race mm-hmm. and and use a porta potty, maybe that's a thing. What if you ate but, like? But like, what if you had like, Indian food the night before? Well, you're at a race. You probably didn't have Indian food. I the did night that before. once. It was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still go with the. I'd still go with the uh, the the porta potty because the. The tripping would cause such anxiety. <laughs> but you don't and know until it happens each time. Well, you, you don't know, but do you know it's going to happen? No, you're no. unaware every time. You think, oh my God, I've got it this time. Boom, you're on your face at the finish line and you miss your PR. For the rest of, for the rest of your race. For the rest days. of your life. So no more PRs ever. Ever. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with that, but like... You have to trip <laughs> to miss it though. <laughs> I feel like... People would start to notice, hey, why does Tom <laughs> trip at the end of each race all the time? You would be known as the but tripping eventually guy. Eventually, you would catch on to the fact that you're tripping every race and then like think to yourself, I've got to prepare myself for the trip, but then there's just nothing you no. can do about In it. In this magical where- world, you are completely unaware mm-hmm. that you will trip again. But are you aware that you did trip sure. from race to race? Yeah. So if I ran 10 races in a row and I tripped in each race, I would stop running races. <laughs> something's, something's clearly wrong with me and I can't be trusted to run a race. Oh, gosh. Just, I don't so know. that's me. I'd go, with the, I'd go with the porta potty. Four sheets is really very little amount of toilet paper. Yeah. Well, and I'm thinking I would go to the porta potty too. But for, uh, for a different reason. So I don't like the PRP, the pre-race poop. It's such it's such a thing for runners and all runners talk about it and they have like a ritual. But my ritual on race day, and it only happens to me on race day, is I have anxiety about my PRP and I just can't go at all. 
So, and I'm like standing in the corral freaking out because <laughs> I haven't had mine yet. Every single race I do, uh, I have severe anxiety about not being able to go. So if I could actually go before a run and relieve that anxiety, I would, because I would rather just go and have it be over with because I'm so nervous it's going to happen while I'm running. But I mean, oh there's God. been, I don't know, there's been times where I've had like, pain in my stomach so bad and my anxiety is just so bad because I put so much pressure on myself that I can't have my PRP. So you'd rather <laughs> just go to the porta potty? I'd rather just go to the porta potty. <laughs> Even though there's only four sheets of toilet paper. Yeah. And the problem is like I've got anxiety, so I keep magically think it's going to happen. So I end up going to the porta potty like five or six times before every single race I do because I'm just <laughs> trying like I just am praying that something happens. <laughs> well, in this magical world, it will happen. And you will only have four single yeah, sheets see, of toilet paper. And I feel like that's fun. That's it. four sheets is fine. Like, man, I man, usually because I'm a girl, a and I always I'm, run with like a nerd belt. I know, like you guys always run like in your underwear, and like you have like <laughs> I don't know a thimble full of water with you. But I have like a utility belt on, and I always at least have tissues in my utility belt. So I always at least have like something for. So for you me. feel like you'd be prepared. Well, you're yeah, not allowed be to be prepared. prepared. Oh, you're, you can't you're not be prepared. Allowed to be you're prepared. not allowed to be prepared. You can only use what is in the porta pot. <laughs> I feel like it's fine. Hmm? I feel like it's fine. I don't know. I'm thinking about like the chafing afterwards, like the. Well, the, like, I mean, it depends. <laughs> rubbing of like whatever's left in there, like all. <laughs> could <laughs> could you just take your underwear off at that point? Like you'd just be like, oh, "Well, that's fine. Could, it's yeah. Just going to be pants." What if you're not wearing any? You're not, not savages. <laughs> I'm not that kind of girl, Michael. <laughs> I still don't think that I wouldn't ever want to PR again. Like, that sounds sad, too. Like I, I don't know like, if I'd want to fall I feel like every three, time. <laughs> yeah, for three years. I feel like three years, maybe I just limit the number of races I do. Although I don't know that I'm supposed to be limiting the number of races. But again, after like the third time of it happening, I'd be like, <laughs> hmm. This is really, really <laughs> terrible going to races and having no toilet paper. <laughs> So I think that I would pick the the porta potty also. Okay, I don't I don't get to pick because I made it up. So it's yeah, three I, for three. We all pick the porta potty. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, wow, I think go. that I don't want to trip minds. for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, if anybody out there has uh, an answer that they would like to share, you can uh, hit us up at well, on podcast at gmail dot com. Let us know which one you choose, or if you would like to submit a would you rather, feel free do that too. Um open to that as well all right so kind of kind of wrapping us up let's go around and everyone tell me something good aaron tell me something good well so right now we have started um a new show that we found on um acorn tv we've been doing um with the uh quarantine um picking up on Apple TV, the different uh, subscriptions you can do. So we had like um, epics for a little while. We're going to do stars, but we have one called Acorn TV, which is like um, an international um, channel, I think where they have like a lot of international shows. So it's a lot of British stuff. Um, And there's a TV show on there called Agatha Raisin. And it is a modern day, as uh, Michael puts it, a modern day, a uh, funny version of Murder, She Wrote, <laughs> where she is the most ridiculous detective um, in the entire universe. And it was nothing what we expected it to be, but it is the most amazing show I've seen in a long time. <laughs> so we've really been enjoying that. <laughs> Is she like a young woman? Whenever I hear the name Agatha, I picture like an old witch. She's actually, she, the woman who plays her was the, um, she was the woman on Extras, uh, the Ricky Gervais show from about seven, eight years ago. Oh, she was like you. his uh, friend from that show. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, she was it's an actually ugly her, baddie yeah. too for a little while. Um, I mean, she's probably in her 40s. Yeah, I, I would assume she's similar age to Ricky she's Gervais. Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, she's just like this. It's it's like a kooky, wacky show um, that like we almost dismissed because um, the picture on the like when you're scrolling was really ridiculous. But we're like, <laughs> what is this thing? And then I started looking up best TV shows on Acorn, and and it was on like every top ten list. And so all the characters are like just so silly. <laughs> 
<laughs> that you can't even believe that these people are somehow solving mysteries and murders. <laughs> um, but they're like funny in that way. That's not like so over the top. <laughs> yeah, it's just like over the top enough. Yeah. So if you have Acorn TV, you should check it out. It's definitely fun. Yeah. All right, Diana, tell me something good. Yeah, so tell me something good. I, I just love this segment, this idea of just sharing, you know, whatever whatever media we're consuming, whatever whatever's giving us, you know, warm fuzzies this week. And for me, uh, Community is one of my all-time favorite shows. And for Charity last week, the whole cast, including Donald Glover, came together to record um a table read for an episode and it was actually the final episode donald glover was on so that was great so it was it was sentimental but silly everyone was giggling everyone's laughing um they even got pedro pascal who is the actual mandalorian to come on and he was telling this running joke about semen and just could not keep it together like he had to stop and start a thousand times just because he was giggling so hard it was just like it was such a joy to watch um, and it just made me so happy, um, just in this time where, where things are a little, you know, a little blue, a little, you know, not normal. Um, it was just so great to see the group and they raised a ton of money, um, for the world kitchen. So I think that's fabulous. That's awesome. So that, that is my something good this week. How about you, Michael? Uh, so I think I'll do a, a podcast that I enjoy called Bat and Spider. This is that's, a podcast about... That's terrifying. It, it is. It's hosted by uh, two good people, uh, Charles Forsman, creator of uh, End of the Effing World, and You're Not Okay With This, and or I Am Not Okay With This, not You're Not Okay With This, and uh, <laughs> Dale, who is uh, a member of Interview with Podcast Vampire, and amongst other things. So they go through each week and are tackling some of the most amazing B drive-in style horror movies that should never be seen <laughs> love it i love that uh recent ones were uh the glenn danzig produced and directed verotica which is actually a new film uh they went back and did driller killer which is early 70s i believe um just the name of that yeah, 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 yeah. Killer. yeah. so uh, just and, and they have a great rapport really fun show even if you don't watch these movies which you probably shouldn't let's be perfectly honest these are not good movies it's still it's still a good time to listen about how you know the thing they're experiencing these movies for the first time is it sort of like a a mystery science theater-esque where where they're just going through each of these movies and 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 just critiquing them on on how campy they are. No, or? no, actually, they take it like they both are fans of these types of movies, so they do take it seriously in that way. They're not fans in the way that they're like these are good movies, but they're fans in the way that they appreciate what these people are putting on screen. Right, they appreciate the genre. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's not an ironic viewing of the movies. Right, cool. which I could see that would work as well. So, so for me. And everyone will learn very quickly that I'm a huge fan of music. I'm a huge fan of Dave Matthews band. I guess about three or so weeks ago, they started every Wednesday, they stream a concert from their archives um, on Facebook and YouTube. And, you know, I will log in at 8 PM on Wednesday and, and you see the show and it's, quote unquote live, but you know, it's, it's a live stream of a, of a previously recorded show, a concert. And uh, you know, just follow along with the comments of, of the Dave Matthews fans. And last week they did a show from 2006 where I think um, the set list had pretty much every album that they've recorded in the studio. And it just brings me so much joy because um, I'm a huge concert guy. Um, and as we know, a lot of things have been postponed or canceled. And so I'm not going to have my, concert summer like i have for the last 20 years so this is just it kind of brings me back to that feeling and um like them or not dave matthews has a has a huge community of of, of like-minded fans so you know it's really cool to interact with the fans just you know show the positivity show the love and and you know i'm, I'm a huge fan of the music so that's been that's been something i've looked forward to each week and it's been it's been awesome yeah, and it's funny because I was never like I I always liked Dave Matthews, but I wasn't like a super fan. But 
since Tom and I got together, I mean, we go once, twice, sometimes three times a year to see mm. him. Like we go to the whole tailgate. It's, you know, cargo shorts as far as the eye can see in the parking <laughs> lot. Like it's all these guys just, just so happy to be there. And they're all, you know, how many concerts have you been to? Well, I've been to 90 and I've been to 70. And, oh my gosh. You know, wow. I follow yeah. him around and I've seen him this many times. So they're just trying to one up each other. And then there's always the discussion of, you know, well, what's he going to play next, right? Because he's a jam band. And then the set list will get released online. So everyone is looking up the set list from, you know, previous nights. So they're like, well, four weeks or four weeks ago at this city, they played this. But two nights ago here, they played that. So I think they're going to open up with this tonight. It's like the craziest thing I've ever seen (laughs) um, to have fans that are just like so, so passionate. Um, And I know there's a lot of people and I know like, like Michael isn't like the (laughs) fan of dave but you know i think like once you're in it you're in it <laughs> i mean teach their own right it's exactly. you know everyone's you know and and i trust me i get the critique because those songs start to run together after you've listened to them since you know 1991 when the band was formed um i've heard these songs i've heard these lyrics so many times um so i get the i get the critique of them but you know just like anything everyone's got their something right and Dave's definitely one of the, one of those people for me. So yeah, that's that's been that's been keeping me going. But guys, that brings yeah. us to our closing. Can't believe it. One episode in, one. We, we put one in the can. How's everybody that's feeling? Fun. Feel good. <laughs> Does it feel good to put one in the can. <laughs> yes. Moving on. Does. Moving on. It always feels very good. Okay. All right. And on that note. Up for our first episode thank you everyone um you know be sure to follow us on social media we have instagram uh at will run for podcast uh like us on facebook just look for will run for podcast on facebook we'd love to hear from everybody um you know what what are you running for leave a comment on the facebook or you can email us um like michael mentioned earlier at will run for podcast at gmail.com And our goal really is to have a new episode every other week. So please subscribe and leave a review. Tell us how we're doing. And and our podcast will be available on most platforms. If you can't find it on your preferred service, just uh, shoot us an email or leave us a comment on Facebook and let us know. Please hashtag your stories while you're out there running using the hashtag WillRun4Podcast so we can share and start building a community. But really, that's it. We we, we just want to thank everybody for listening. For Aaron, Michael, and Diana, we will see you next time. Bye. See you.